My eyes hurt, so I'm wearing sunglasses even though it's the middle of the night. Do I have to do this? Like, actually, I'm asking you guys. Do, do, did you guys want this? Because a lot of y'all have been bugging me since I did the unboxing stream of this blaster to do a review on it. Even more than people bugged me to cover this one. I did what you asked. Why? Why do you make me put up with stuff like this? I don't know. But what I do know is that this is the Busby Rogue. I am so mad. Cue the intro. So the Rogue is a 2024 release out of Busby, and obviously since it's Busby, there's no direct series that it's in. It is just Busby, and it's the Rogue, and this is their first and currently only Strife competitor. And a little bit of a spoiler warning. This makes the Spectrum look like Hasbro made it back in like 2013. So yeah, we got a lot to go over, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go over the design. And to do that, we have to remove the accessories that it comes with. We have a 30 drum, we have a scope, and we have a barrel. There is only one part of this blaster's design that I actually like, and that is this big orange thing that goes through the entire thing. Because it is textured really nicely like a circuit board, and it looks really cool on the shell. But the problem with the rest of the shell is that it looks untextured, like a 90s video game. Like, for example, this little detail right here that looks like it should be a selector switch or a safety. It's just matte plastic, and it looks fuzzy. When you look at it from a distance, it looks like it hasn't loaded properly. Like, it looks like this shell design is super unfinished, and it just doesn't work at all. And obviously, because it's Busby, there's no paint on it whatsoever, not even on the right side of it. There's no logo. It doesn't even, like, have it etched into the, into the shell. There's no Busby. Be. There's no rogue. Like, you wouldn't even know what this thing is called if you didn't see the big label on it at the store. And when you add this stuff back onto it... It doesn't look much better. The scope is way too big for the blaster. The barrel muzzle thing just makes it look like a Fortnite blaster. And there's no stock point. There's no built-in stock. There's no end strike stock attachment point. Hell, there isn't even that weird proprietary stock that Dart Zone came out with for the Spectrum on here. Like, there's no way to add a stock. And there's like a sniper style scope through it. And a freaking iron slate on the barrel. Who designed this thing? What were they on? But let's get on to the ergonomics. <laughs> this blaster features a main grip and a foregrip. The foregrip isn't too bad. This whole area up here is pretty comfortable to put your hand on, though it's really annoyingly far away from the magwell. So if you have any form of magazine in it, like for example, the drum that it came with, your hand sits really far away from it. And as such, if you try and mag release it, you can't like quickly like do that. You have to break your grip both times. This is one of the worst main grips I've ever used. It's way too big in the worst way possible. First of all, there's this cut section right here. Like right there, there's a hard line that separates the bottom half from the top half. The top half is noticeably smaller from every angle, and it creates this really hard divot that pushes straight into your palm. And it's super uncomfortable and poorly made. But what's even worse is the way that these triggers are set up. Look how big this main trigger is. Look how big it is. It's almost the size of my hand and I have to get two fingers on it. But what's even worse than that is the lack of any finger troil separating the main trigger from the rest of the blaster, let alone a finger troil separating the rev trigger from the rest of the blaster, which means that essentially this happens. 
you rev the blaster with your pinky and your ring finger just kind of sits in the middle. What is going on? Now I know this looks funny, but genuinely, this is the only comfortable way I've been able to hold the blaster. Because if you try and hold it like this with your middle finger on the rev trigger and your index finger on the main trigger, it is painfully uncomfortable to the point where like, I don't like holding it. It sucks, it's painful to hold. I don't want anything to do with this main grip. If there's one mod that I would do to this blaster, and believe me, there's quite a bit of mods that I want to do to this blaster, it would be to get rid of this and put a regular strife grip on there because this is one of the worst grips I've ever used in my life. So how does this blaster work? Well, really quickly, I want to address putting the batteries in because it's probably one of the few things I actually like about this blaster. You unscrew one screw and then this thing folds up like that. And there are these four little channels that you can just drop the batteries into like this. And then you fold the whole thing closed and screw it down with a single screw like that which reduce the ability to lose the battery door, but also means that you can't change out the battery door. This blaster is a magazine-fed semi-automatic flywheel blaster, very similarly to a Strife. So you take your mag in, you put it in here, you pull the rev trigger down, you fire one at a time. Ugh. Ugh. Let's talk about the triggers and the smoothness of operation. Yeah, if you thought that the, uh, the, the grip is the only thing that sucked, yeah, the triggers suck too. The rev trigger is so smushy. Like, really painfully smushy. It is one of the most annoying rev triggers I've ever used on something like this. And it's gargantuan! It's massive! It's bigger than the one on the Mac 100, which notoriously had a humongous rev trigger. But then again, that was a humongous blaster with a finger troil that separated the rev trigger from the rest of the grip. This one does not. So you just have this enormous button that takes up way too much space and is way too easy to actuate when you don't want it to. Really bad rev trigger. The main trigger is worse because the trigger return spring is so unbelievably heavy that after using this 130 drum, my index finger gets so tired that I don't want to use it anymore at all. So I put two fingers on it and even then I can't get very far before my fingers start to get tired. It feels like you're pulling it through molasses. It's a terribly designed main trigger. Both of these triggers are horrifically bad. The mag release isn't much better. Why? Because it's way too far away from the grip. So you have no way of being able to hit it with your middle finger. Very similar problem to what the Strife X and the Maxim Pro have. But even the Strife had this problem fixed. Why can't I reach it? No, instead you have to figure out how to do this. Well, remember, the foregrip is all the way up here. So theoretically to reload mags, you would have to do this. Unbelievable. No, it doesn't mag drop, because why the hell would it mag drop? Now let's quickly talk about the all clear 30 drum it comes with. The one thing that people would genuinely want out of this blaster, and it's pretty good. This 30 drum is actually pretty usable. It is relatively tight up here with the awkward texturing that Busby has on their magazine. So I would recommend just like sanding this down to make it smooth and then polishing it. So it'll fit into magwells a little bit easier. But honestly, the drum is really well built. It's made with really thick, nice feeling plastic. And the mechanism inside of it is foolproof. It never jams up. It has this big piston thing that pushes down and the piston then proceeds to rotate. $25 for this blaster just to get a 30 drum isn't the worst case I've seen of paying extra for proprietary mags. I mean, the Titan exists, the Chaos exists, and people paid through the nose for those. This one isn't that expensive and you get a 30 drum. Contrary to Nerf's offering where you have to pay $70 for an Infinis to get a 30 drum, this one is made slightly worse than the Infinis drum, but ironically enough, works a little bit better than the Infinis drum. So honestly, I think this is a pretty good deal just for this 30 drum itself. Do I have to talk about the blaster? I don't want to. I just want to talk about the 30 drum all day. The only other thing that I can note is one, the jam door is horrifically insulting. Look at this. Look at this nasty connector that is totally going to break off in like a week. There's no way this is going to last. Look at this thing. You think that the Elite 2.0 jam doors suck? This thing sucks. 
I can squish it without any issue. And it has side-mounted flywheels with no concavity or any form of crush whatsoever. You know what that leads to? Inconsistency in firing. Gosh, it sounds like crap. You wanna see that inconsistency in firing? Firing demo. I cannot be bothered to do a first person firing demo for this piece of garbage. I will be shooting at the small nerf target that is right up there. So what mod potential does it have? I have no idea. Because the battery terminals are built into this thing, this thing is pinned together from the top, the front of this is clipped on so you can't just remove it, the flywheels are mounted from the side and seem to be using a proprietary cage that you can't really do anything with. Yeah, what do I think of the Rogue? This is the worst blaster of 2024. This is without a doubt the worst thing that has come out all year. This blaster sucks so much that I can't see anything Dart Zone makes, Nerf makes, or Zuru makes being worse than it. Not even any of Busby's upcoming offerings, like the skewer thing that they are making this year. There is no way that thing will be worse than this blaster. This blaster is inexcusably bad. It is a Strife reskin that costs more than the original Strife retailed for, and is worse than the Spectrum. You can buy the Spectrum still. I can't believe I am recommending a Spectrum, but legitimately, it is $5 less than this thing, and is so much better. You can actually hold it with human hands, and maybe hit what you're aiming at, and it actually shoots at like 100 FPS. Contrary to this, which barely hits mid-60s, this blaster sucks! This thing freaking sucks! Please, if you see this thing at Walmart, avoid it. If you see anybody else picking this thing up because they think it looks cool, tell them about it. Tell them about your knowledge of this blaster because I don't want anyone else to put up with this thing. This blaster sucks. Please don't buy one. I cannot beg you guys enough to please not buy the Rogue. I'm begging you all. I'm actually, I'm pleading with you guys to not buy one of these. I can't allow Busby to, to get away with this again, ever. This thing is a freaking insult to any form of semi-auto blaster. I'd rather use the Flight. I'd rather use the Phoenix. Screw this thing. Thanks for watching. If you still want it, if you still, after everything I've told you, want this thing for some reason, I will link it in the description below. I will also be linking the Modulus Strife in the description below because that's a far better option, but I will be linking it. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.